So once we've got our site up and running, one of the things that's important to do with, with WordPress is to make a little setting change of a screen that we've seen before, but now this time I will explain it a little bit more in detail. Right now, the default usually is that, so just watch this a moment, usually the default in WordPress is that uh, if you visit a particular page like About Us, usually the default is that there is a number in the address of, of, of a WordPress, usually. Now for some reason ours is not there, but I'm not sure why. Usually there's a number that says something like P equals 99. That's the default behavior of WordPress. Because WordPress lives on top of or, or uses a database. When we created that database, the purpose of that database in PHP my admin is to store everything about your site and it stores everything with with a simple number you know a, a one digit two digit four digit number everything is a number inside the WordPress database so the name of your theme is a number how many articles you have is a number every single page is just a number that's not good for SEO SEO is search engine optimization which is eventually, once we've made our website and it's out there live on Bluehost, and I'm ready to sell products, I want people to find my site. So there's a whole art and a science of search engine optimization, and I happen to teach a class on SEO starting next month. I'll look for it in the catalog, but I believe it's Wednesday nights, 6 p.m. So in the SEO class, we go into all of the details about optimizing our site, search engine optimization. You've got a site, but now you want people to find it. One of the things that I can show you right now that we can do in WordPress is we want to make it so that our website has friendly, uh, friendly URLs, friendly addresses. Because by default, when you set yourself up on Bluehost or GoDaddy or whatever, most likely your site is going to be Victor's Bakery. And when you visit the, the About Us, it's going to say victorsbakery.com slash p47. It's going to be numbers. The search engines don't like that. Google, Yahoo, Bing, AOL, all of those, they don't like that your site is just numbers. They want meaningful names, such as victor.com slash about us, or victor.com slash shop, or victor.com slash products slash birthday cakes. They want meaningful names in the address. So I'm going to show you where you set that in WordPress. The caveat, though, is because we are running with WAMP, it's not a real server. It's not online, it's not, it's not GoDaddy, it's not Bluehost, it's not a real server, it's a virtual server. So we have to do one extra thing, which I apologize, it's not in any of the notes, I keep forgetting to put it in there, so make a note here. We have to activate one thing inside of WAMP, and then we can do what I'm about to show you. If you have a real uh, word, uh, if you have a real GoDaddy and so forth, you don't need to do this. But we need to do this in this room because um, we've got WAMP. On the bottom right corner, if you don't see your little WAMP W, it's probably hidden inside of the double arrow. So click the double arrow down there. Now, do you see your WAMP icon? Click once on the WAMP icon. Just click it once to activate that little menu. You've seen that before. Now instead we'll go to this Apache menu. Hover over the Apache menu and then hover over Apache modules. Here are a bunch of server options that we don't really need to deal with ever except in this one case in this room. When you are at GoDaddy and such you never have to deal with this really. There's a bunch of options and one option is off. The default is that it's off in WAMP, and we have to turn it on. So scroll down, it's alphabetical. We're going to scroll down to the R's. We're going to look for Rewrite Module. So just scroll down. We'll find R's, Rewrite Module. Once you see Rewrite Module, Rewrite underscore Module, click it. You might see then that the little uh, W turns red, then orange, then green. It goes back to normal green, or it should. Um, we're activating an option that is not on by default 
on WAMP. If you're running MAMP, I believe you don't have to worry about this. It's fine. So if you've got a Mac and you're running MAMP, you don't need to do this, I believe. We'll check right now when we try to do it. But on WAMP, we need to turn on this one option. So once again, it's in the W. It's in the Apache menu. Apache modules. And then scroll down alphabetically to rewrite module. And I'm just confirming. It's on now. See the little check mark? It was not on a moment ago. If you want to double check it, you can go back to that same little window. You should see the check mark on rewrite module. So we just need to do this once, and then we can do what I was going to show you. Did everyone get rewrite module active? We need to do that once every week. Yeah, we need to do that. Question in the back? Oh, it's not selectable. Right, so the rewrite module is this little extra option that for some reason is not active on WIMP. But on MAMP, on the Mac, it should be active. And when you're on Bluehost or whatever, it should automatically be active. So once again, we're doing it, we have to do it the hard way simply because, you know, in my perfect world, everyone would walk in here, you've already got Bluehost set up, we're just ready to start. But people come in here with a variety of, of, of skills and um, background and such. So we have to do things the hard way. But anyway, that's been activated, the rewrite module. Now, this is what I was going to show you. This you do want to do, even if you get GoDaddy or Bluehost or whatever. Uh, you log into your dashboard. You go, you hover over Settings. And then you, then you click on Permalinks. We've been there before. When we resurrected the site earlier today, when we resurrected the site last week, we've seen this screen. So select Permalinks under Settings. This is the screen we were at a moment ago. This is what I'm saying. The default is this first one. My site is going to be called whatever slash numbers. We don't want that. That's not good SEO. Other better SEO schemes are day, name, etc. For some reason, mine says custom structure and yours probably too. Um, but the one that's most recommended for SEO is post name. So select post name and it's going to give you a structure with the name of your site slash the name of your page. So if I have a page called About Us, it'll be called About Us in the address instead of P147. You'll have uh, a products page, it'll be called products or shop or whatever you want instead of my site slash 1997. The numbers are not going to help you in SEO matters, search engine optimization. What's going to help you are human readable names to your to your addresses. So when you're and that's how you turn it on right here. So when you're giving out the address to someone for that page, mm -hmm. you just give them the real name, then you're, you don't have to give them the name. Yeah, because you tell someone, visit my visit my shop at victor.com slash p14877. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you make a change to post name here, remember to save. Click save at the bottom. So that's the thing. When we, uh, when we do part two of the class, I'll have another handout that includes the rewrite module and to turn this on. Uh, because this oftentimes is not mentioned in most 
WordPress tutorials. The default works, so no one thinks to change it, but if you know about SEO, this is important to do. Our site should continue to function as normal. Just to test it, hover over uh, the name of the site and visit site. What I want to do is just visit the site and browse the pages a bit. You should not have any broken links. If you have broken links, that means your rewrite module is not active. That's why we have to go to rewrite module and turn it on first. And if you take a peek up on the top, you will see localhost local slash WordPress slash we're open for business. You've got real words that the search engines will look at and therefore understand and rank you better than a page that's called victor.com slash 77. Right there. Can you change it to exactly like we're open for business? How do you change it to make it something more creative or something? Um, yeah, let's take a quick look at that. That's a good point. Uh, let's say you're looking at, uh, if you've got my site, everyone probably has the We're Open for Business, which is um, inside the blog. Just so that we're all looking at the same thing. Let's try this. We're visiting the site. Click on our blog and the last blog post here. We're Open for Business. Click on its title. That takes you to view that particular blog post. And do you see an edit? right there. Click edit, that'll take you back to the same way it would have happened if we went back to the dashboard and then to the posts and then to edit that page. We can edit this page directly. If you're logged in you can edit any of your pages. Look for the edit button. Or you should also see edit at the top there if you're logged in. So let's edit this post and if you wanted to customize if you wanted to customize your address to be something else, there is a spot somewhere that you can click, perhaps, that will let you edit that. That's right. <laughs> so up here on the permalink, now that we know what those are, those are the addresses for our pages. Here's the address preview, and we see here, edit. So we can edit the yellow part, not the rest, because that's basic. But here we can edit the permalink to anything we want. So if you do take an SEO class and, and learn much more about SEO concepts, this, this address here is, is fine, I think. But if you really wanted to craft it with keywords or other SEO techniques, you can easily click Edit and change its name. One thing that I would say, though, if you don't take the SEO class, be careful. Because one thing is that whatever you change this to, you want to use dashes to separate the words. Because if you wrote, now we're open, that's not good. The search engine is going to see some word called nowhere. Oh. No worry. It's not going to see, now we're open. It's going to see no worry. So if you want to change that, be sure you use dashes for your, for your words. Maybe I could just change it shorter. Open for business. Click OK. And then remember to update on the right side. Yes. You want dashes in your in your sub pages, yes. But if if you did take the SEO class, I might have mentioned about dashes in the main address. For example, Victor's dash bakery dash San Diego dot com, that's not good. The dot .com part, if you've got a bunch of dashes there, this is the thing. This is why SEO is complicated. This is why we've got a four-week class about it, because there's a lot of details. But dashes in your dot .com name, that might not help you. The search engines might see that that looks like a spammy site. Because you've probably heard of sites that are like free-buttons-for-my-website.com. Low-quality site. Um, so dashes in your .com name, not so good. Dashes in the actual page name, very good. How would you ever know that? Take a class on SEO. I'm going to update that. And now that particular page has, uh, has an edited permalink and it will help my SEO in the future. And again, this is as much as I can really say about SEO. There's a whole class about it starting next month on Wednesdays.
one of the things that I always talk about also on the last day of the course is have you been noticing you've got a little number next to plugins you've also got a little number up on the top on that spinning arrow those are that means you there's some updates there are updates to to something if you see that uh, that update number I see a number one. Does anyone see anything else beside a number one? All right. Whatever number you see there, uh, click on it. That takes you to the update screen, which is just under the dashboard updates. And WordPress has three main types of updates. Just like your Windows computer might tell you there's a new update, your Mac computer might tell you there's a new update. Your, uh, your phone might tell you there's a new update. Updates are a fact of life in software because software is always, in theory, improving, getting new features, getting security vulnerabilities fixed. Um, so updates, that's why we have updates. Software is always improving. WordPress is software, and therefore it also has updates. So um, there's three types of up updates that we would deal with in WordPress, they're listed here. There is the core of up to, uh, the core of WordPress, the core WordPress software, the main software that everything runs on top of. And at the moment, I don't need an update on WordPress, the core WordPress software. I've got the latest version, 4.2.2. If you maybe have a website that you created three months ago. Um, between then and now, a new version of WordPress has most likely come out. You might have had version WordPress 4.0, and now we've got version 4.2.2. And somewhere we can look up, well, what's, what's changed? What's updated? Most of the time, it's security features. Um, WordPress is the biggest software to make websites, and therefore it's the biggest target for, for hackers and spammers and crackers and all of those bad guys to to break into. So if they're the biggest target, you want to make sure you're protected and safe. So updates in general are a good thing. They give you more security. But updates unfortunately are a double-edged sword. Because not only do you have the WordPress core software to update, you could also have plugin updates and you can also have theme updates. And the thing is that a plugin, as we've seen with Duplicator, is like extra features that we add to your WordPress site. That Duplicator plugin did not come with WordPress. We downloaded it, we installed it, we used it. And some other author or, or company deals with the updates, not the main WordPress company. The main WordPress company pushes out the main WordPress core updates. But your plugins oftentimes come from third parties. So it's up to those third party developers to fix their security problems and update and so forth. And this is why sometimes sites get hacked. Because maybe you downloaded this great plugin that gives you these extra Twitter features. But the author has not updated it in a year. That's been a whole year for hackers to try to figure out if there's some some hole in the software. And if there is, they're going to break into your site. So this is telling me a Kismet should be updated. We're running version 3.11 and the current one is 3.12. And this will tell you what's new. Take a quick look at what's new. Click there, view version details. Oftentimes, this is a little technical because all of this stuff is a little technical. What does it say? Reduce the amount of space a Kismet uses in the comment meta table. Okay, sounds great. Fixed a bug where some comments with quotes in the author name weren't getting history entries. Preemptive security improvement to ensure that the a Kismet plugin can't be used by attackers to compromise a WordPress installation. So it does talk about their security updates on that. That's nice. Uh, click the X on the top right. Close it. Don't click install just yet. 
And this was last updated apparently five days ago. But anyway, close that for a moment. We have the core WordPress updates, plugin updates, and theme updates. What's a theme again? The graphics, the design, the style of your site. Your theme can come from a third-party company. There are, there are design studios that, that make a living creating WordPress themes and publishing them and making some great sites for people and, and so forth. But themes could also have vulnerabilities. All of this stuff is complicated. There's like four computer programming languages that make up WordPress. There's a lot of software, there's a lot of code. So the bad guys are trying to find exploits, are trying to see, is there a misspelling in this code? Will it do some will something happen if I try to inject this fraudulent JavaScript? And a theme could also suffer from that. A theme could have vulnerabilities. So we might get theme updates listed here as well. Ours should say your themes are all up to date. So at the moment we seem to have the latest themes. Um, we seem to be safe there. So if I'm saying that, that updates are good because they can eliminate vulnerabilities, then we should obviously rush and update all the time, right? Why might we not? Anyone have an idea? What happens when you, if you're an iPhone user, what did you experience when you went from iOS 6 to iOS 7? If you're an Android user, what did you experience when you went to version 4 to version 5? Like a big interface change, maybe? The buttons change? The graphics change? I don't know how to use my phone anymore. That could happen with updates of the WordPress items. When they went from WordPress 3 to 4, the interface changed. I've been using WordPress since 2.0, and I've, and I've seen this change throughout the years. It used to have gradients and shadows and all that stuff that was en vogue a few years ago. What's en vogue now with design is known as a flat design. There's no gradients anymore and shadows and all that fun looking stuff. So the interface has changed in WordPress throughout the years. The functionality has changed. So one reason you might not want to update is it might change too much. You know, it's like stepping into your car and suddenly the whole instrument panel is different. You can still drive it. But you're gonna have to figure out how to drive your car again. So that's one possibility. I don't think that's a strong enough detriment though for you to do updates, to not do updates, because updates can protect you. What I would say is a bigger detriment, unfortunately, is that one plugin that gets updated might conflict with another plugin that hasn't been updated. I've seen this before. There's been this plugin that was just a slideshow. It would show pictures, but it was reliant on another plugin to um, to to have some of its functionality active. One of the plugins was updated, and the other one wasn't. So for this client, we updated it. Then the 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 uh, slideshow stopped working. The pictures were just stuck. They didn't cycle anymore. And the problem was that that other plugin hadn't been updated yet. That other author hadn't gotten around to rewriting their code to update it to make to fix the, the vulnerabilities. So how do you know if that's going to happen? Unfortunately, you don't. Because there's so many theme authors, so many plugin authors out there. So one way to hold on, to, to give yourself a safety net is this duplicator plugin. Make a copy of your site right now before you make the updates. And you'll have a perfect copy of your site. Make the updates test the site, works perfectly, great. Oops, something's broken, Re resurrect the site, you're back to before you made the update. Yes, it takes that extra effort to resurrect the site and so forth, but you've got a perfect copy of your site to go back to, don't you? So every time you update, you literally have to go through every aspect of your site? In theory, but if you read, if you read these details, it might tell you what's a big change and what's not, and if there's conflicts and such, and again, it might look a little boring, but it might tell you, and it, is, and it also says on the right, it's compatible with our version. If it's not compatible, then that's a red flag. If it has not been updated in 
in six months, that might be a red flag. So again, let me ask again, are you sure you want to be your own Amazon.com? Amazon.com has engineers working on this 24 hours a day to make sure their site works perfectly, that their software works perfectly. Now you are going to be in charge of all of that. You could leave your site alone and never update and your site will work. And you're going to be one of billions of sites out there. You may never get targeted. But you could, if you've got an old plugin, if you've got an old theme, you never know. So plugins, uh, so updates are useful, but I don't willy-nilly just always click update, update, update. I do a little research. I check the details here. I make a duplicator backup, and then I do the updates. I test the site, the important things. Seems to work, great, move on. If something doesn't work, I've got to resurrect and go back and then figure out what went wrong. But I would say also, make a note, that uh, usually the order to update to make updates, because you've got the core WordPress, you've got plugins, and you've got themes, the order that I would do it in is I would do the, I would make a duplicator backup first. Well, let me write it down here. Uh, so my suggestion for updates, update, uh, updates strategy and I'll write it in a better handout later, but update strategy. Update, or actually step zero, create a duplicator backup before any updates. Once you've made that duplicate, your site is safe. You download those, those two files, the installer file and the zip file, and save them somewhere on a USB, on two USBs, uh, on your Dropbox or wherever. Save your site. Create a duplicator backup before any updates. Then the first thing that I would do is update the core WordPress software. It's the first item on the list of that screen. Test the site. If the site is broken, resurrect, and then you have to figure out what's wrong, and that could be a big endeavor. Resurrect and start over. And I can't say much more than that because really, if, if you update your site and suddenly everything's broken, that's a big issue. You might have to stick with your current version of WordPress, and that could be a problem. If the site is fine, proceed, which is then update the theme. If you're super paranoid, yeah, I could put in a step here, parenthetical, create a duplicator archive. It depends on how much time you have, how much work you want to do, because you could create a duplicator archive at every step of the way, right? This, again, this is like for really, really uh, paranoid people. I don't do it, really. So, uh, main archive, update core, test it, looks good, update the theme, test the site again. Basically, I'll copy and paste this again, test the site again. If it's broken, back up to your last uh, archive and try again. If there is no problem, okay, proceed. The next thing to update. Update the plugins. But you may have several plugins, so I would say update the most important plugins first. most important plugin first. And what I mean by that is the one that really has, has the most functionality of your site. 
Next month when we talk about e-commerce, there's going to be a specific plugin that runs the whole e-commerce system. So that would be the most important one for that one to work. Update the most important. Then least important are like the flash, the the icing on the cake, the, the slideshow, and the, you know, what else? The, um, the gallery plugins and so forth. And proceed if successful plugin update. Proceed with each plugin in order of importance. And then at the end, test the site. If the site is broken, resurrect and start again. If the site is fine, you successfully updated WordPress. If you had a WordPress site created several months ago, people sometimes come to these classes and they're still running WordPress 2.6. And it's on 4.2 at the moment. So um, if you have if you've let that much amount of time pass, you could have a lot of problems updating because again these pieces are all interrelated. So if you set up a schedule, I would say check for updates once a month. Log into your site and check once a month are there any updates. Um, that's a good strategy to uh, make sure that your site is not falling behind on major changes, major software changes. Yes? Is the client knowledgeable enough to do the updates? No. Or are you more are you the more knowledgeable one? So most likely you would be doing it, but depending on what kind of contract or agreement you have with that company, you know, I would definitely try to be as protecting yourself as much as possible because you know things could go wrong. You could break their whole site and lose everything. And I don't want to scare people, but that's why the duplicator plug backup is very important to do. So the short answer is that most likely you as the person managing the site would do these updates but then you've got a lot now of uh, responsibility. You know when we do this for our clients we know that if we mess up we can mess up their whole site. But with that archive there that's a safety net. And that's why it's one of the most important plugins I talk about in the in these classes. Yes? Yeah, most likely because let's say you've got the option to update the theme, you update it and then you visit your site and right away things are like all over the place or maybe something is, is hidden and that sort of thing. So um, the theme would be the most obvious one if something went wrong. The other ones you might have to experiment on your site a little bit because maybe there's a plugin that shows your tweets on the edge. And well that's not mission critical but now I'm not seeing it anymore. I'm going to write step zero here. That should be the number one thing you do before number one. Update the core, number one. Update the theme, number two. Update the plugins, number three. Any questions on this update concept? Yes? I, I would check once a month to see if there are updates necessary. And if there are, then I would, uh, I would do those updates following this process.
there was also another plugin. Uh, this was probably a couple of years ago. It was called um, uh, Tim Thumb. This was a thumbnail plugin that was very popular, but someone figured out it had some sort of error in the code, and now everyone that was using the Tim Thumb plugin was vulnerable. So then that company released, you know, version 3.7 of it or whatever, and they urged people, please update your plugin, this fixes that issue. Of course, many people didn't, so then that's why there was a huge rash of hacked sites in the summer of whatever, 2012 or something, because someone figured out there's a, there's a problem with that plugin, everyone's using this plugin, let's hack everyone. So if you update your, your, your software, your plugins, you'll be safer. How do you know that people aren't creating them? Plugins with the hack. Well, in theory, in theory, the thing about modern software, especially if it adheres to the uh, to the model and philosophy of open source, mm -hmm. is that people put out software and they also put out the original code. So, in theory, a lot of people are looking at the code and seeing catching bugs and helping each other fix it. That's one of the concepts, one of the tenets of open source. Everyone's going to see my source code. And therefore, if you're hiding something scary in there, someone's probably going to find it and then call it out and get fixed. So here, and then we'll take a break, concretely for us, we've got one update. We don't need to do the main core. We don't need to do a theme. We just have a kismet, and it does say it holds off a potential issue. So uh, we're not going to do a duplicator plugin. We haven't really done much in the site. Um, so if we do mess it up, we can re resurrect to what we did earlier today. But if this was your own site, I would make a, a duplicator plugin, a duplicator um, archive. The way you make an, uh, you do your updates here is simply select which item you want to update. So we'll select a kismet, and then select update plugins. That's going to connect over to the wordpress.org server, download it, update it successfully. While you do any updates, your site automatically goes into maintenance mode. So if someone tries to visit your site, it'll say, sorry, this site is down for maintenance. So when to do these updates? <laughs> if you're up at 2 in the morning, yes. Uh, check for updates once a month, run updates at off hours. Whatever your particular site's hours are where you feel no one's really visiting. Maybe if you're Amazon, people are always visiting, so I don't know when they do their updates. But on yours, if you're a US-based company pretty much just selling to the US, well, any time after 9 p.m., 10 p.m., up to 6 in the morning, taking into account time zones and such, perhaps, um, do it at off hours. So usually for, for my clients, we're doing it uh, at, at the earliest 9 p.m. Most of the sites that we deal with aren't uh, going to be getting a lot of traffic after 9 p.m. Our, our particular statistics show. So run your updates off hours. So in case something happens and you need to resurrect, you're not doing it in the middle of the day when you could be selling something. You're just losing sleep at night. Once you sell enough products, um, you'll be glad that you are keeping your site safe, uh, running updates. All right, so it told me that. Uh, I can return to WordPress updates, and I should have no more updates. We're going to take a break in a moment, and when we come back, we will then uh, talk about more plugins, more useful plugins that make WordPress better, uh, more useful. So it's about 7:30. We'll take 10 minutes break. We'll be back at 7:40. Um, if you need any help with anything, call me over.